I have to laugh at that stupid bird because I, the bird survived. I'm up in the corner. I put the raw footage in. This is what was sent to me a while back. And you can see the bird's alive. Nothing happened to the bird. He flew away. Anyway, this video is a new little acquisition of mine. It's a CD recorder by Tascam that records on all types of discs. Let's check this one out. You know, if you're going to buy yourself a, a CD player, you're better off to buy one that actually has a record button on it so you can record your own. The problem with consumer CD recorders is that they required these special discs that costs an absolute fortune because you're paying a royalty for the right to record music and that royalty here I think it's like a dollar it's over a dollar per disc but I think these ones were a buck twenty or a buck thirty extra on top of the cost of the disc which pushed the cost of these discs into the stratosphere as far as discs go and all the consumer machines had to use these discs. What they did is they have a little code written into the, the lead-in area that the laser reads first to determine whether it's the correct disc and if it isn't, it rejects it. I got given these discs. I've never used one. I was given some that uh, I'm going to turn around and just sell these or something because I don't need them. This machine here is a professional CD recorder. It's a Tascam, and it does not require special discs. This one will work with any good old regular CDR or CDRW. For this demonstration, I'm using CDRW. It also will play back MP3s, and that's why I've got this disc here. This is a garbage Gigastore. I bought some of these along with everybody else. Bought a bunch of these crap discs. Way, way back. This is at least 20 years old, this disc. Maybe older. I guess I could look at the date that it was recorded. It's full of MP3s. It's scratched. It's been not looked after. It's just been lying around. I thought, I wonder if this disc still plays. Because this is this is the cheapest of the cheap. You know, in that era where everyone said, oh, these CDs are only going to last five years. And I haven't even tried this disc yet. I know it's got smooth jazz MP3s on it. Let's see whether it will play. Table of contents reading, that's good. It has 123 tracks on it. MP3 mix. I must have some, just a bunch of each album in a folder is what it is. It's a bunch of albums. Gotta love it. It's got VU meters. How many CD players have got that? None, but the recorders do. And everyone likes to watch the bouncing meters, right? Wow, that one's right up to zero dB. I'm being very careful as to not let more than a couple seconds play. Now some of the other features of this player, and I haven't really played around with this much, but I think if I hit the menu button over here, I play, play mode, continuous, single mode, program mode, random. Cool. Okay, let's go back and play this in random. This is where one of these players with an MP3 disc in it is great. Because you can load up a couple hundred tracks, 123 tracks in this case. Just to use it as a player. Anyway, you get the idea. That's playing back a pre-recorded disc that was recorded on my computer. Eject. Out comes the disc. 
This is a uh, CDRW that I just recorded a little while ago. We're going to do a recording on this, but I recorded a couple tracks on here. I'll erase this disc and we'll start over. I got given a, a, a stack of CDRWs when I was given that uh, that Memorex all-in-one piece of crap that the CD player, or CD recorder actually sounded good. This came with them from the little old lady that uh, owned that and when she... Um, and when she passed away back in the summer, I was left the uh, the discs and that that unit. Uh, anyway, this is uh, this is something I just recorded on this earlier. It's just some music bakery stuff, but I was able to put like um, my own CD text on. Oh, it's still in random now. This could be interesting because I I messed up when I was doing it. <laughs> I cut the, I cut a track halfway through when I was playing around with it, but... Anyway, um... wonder how I can erase this now. I'll stop it. Let's just see if I can turn this to play. Record. Text. System. Play. Record. Volume. Fade in. Fade out. Source. Sync level. Auto track. Auto track level. Volume. Okay, I don't need to touch that. Volume is 0 dB. Let's we'll leave that alone. Uh, let's see here. What's, what does Erase do? Erase disk. Ah, okay. Um, erase disk. Sure. Yeah. Okay, that's how you erase a disk. When you're dealing with a CDRW, obviously when you've got a... Uh, a one-shot disc that's not going to happen but um, CDRW are kind of nice in that respect and they last a long time I've got some CDRW discs that I recorded way back um, from when the first CDRWs first hit the market the very first generation and they are still playable so now the disc is blank to record on it I just hit uh, I think it's this one record and then I can set my levels. So I'm just going to use my MP3 player as a source. I'll pick a track. Maybe uh, this one, maybe? Let's see which one. Yeah, I think this one I'll use. So I'm going to get the song, get going, and I'm going to set my levels, although my levels should be probably pretty correct. We're going to set our level so that it's peaking in around minus, maybe minus four. I mean, I just get this cranked all the way up. It's not a very loud song, that's why. So I hit the play button and it starts recording. So you hit record to enter the record standby mode to set your levels, then you hit play, and that will make the recording. Between tracks, you hit the pause button, and that gets it ready for the next track. Cue your next track, hit the play button to continue recording. I'm going to record a couple tracks on here, then we'll finalize this. See how it works. I'll pull the top off it so you guys can look at it. I picked this up last week, and... Um, I hadn't intended on buying it. I actually got it from the same guy I got that DVD recorder from. And um, he said, I've got this, this CD recorder. Do you want to buy it? He said, I'm going to sell it. I said, well, what are you thinking of asking for it? And he told me, yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it right now. So I went and grabbed, went over to the bank and got some cash and bought it off him on the spot. Because these things go for a few dollars and I didn't pay more than a few dollars for this. So once the track's done, just hit the pause key, that sets it up for the next track. And when I get my next track that I'm going to record, figure out what I'm going to grab next. Maybe I'll take that one. So uh, click the track, go. If you're recording from vinyl, same thing, you cue your track up, boom. Now, you can record direct to a CDR, 
no problem. If you make a mistake, though, you basically burn the disc. I think you can probably delete that one track before you finalize, and it, you won't free up the space, but it'll skip it. Uh, myself, when I'm burning direct, I prefer to burn them onto a CDRW, and then if I mess up, I can at least correct it, not waste space on the disc. Once I've got my compilation the way I like it, then I would finalize the disc, take the disc over, throw it in the computer, make a copy onto a CDR, or just play the CDRW, depending on the CD player. Some players will play them, others won't. One thing I found is that the old first generation DVD players that would not support CDR, they all seem to support playing back audio off of CDRW. If you tap the time button, it gives you the remaining time on the disc. So you always know your running time. You're counting down how many seconds, how many minutes and seconds you've got. These are 80 minute discs. A lot of them were 74. A lot of the earlier CDRWs were 74, but then they came out with the 80 minute versions as well, which is what these ones are. At the end of the recording session, I'm only going to record the three tracks. I'm just going to hit stop. Now, I think I can probably pick up on this again once it's written. I should be able to pick up on this again if I want. But I've stopped the session for now. I can play this, this disc back without finalizing it. track is there I think even if I remove the disc I can put the disc back in you can see where it's been burned just down to the first little level there it'll load the disc and it should tell me my remaining time and I can continue to do this until the disc is full and then once the disc is full, finalize it, and then it will play back on other machines. There's my tracks. So if I go into record, again by hitting record, it now gets it ready for track number four. It should be ready to go here. And then I just picked it, 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 it tells me it's ready for four. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to finalize the disc now so I can try it in another machine and I believe there's a way to unfinalize this as well after it's finalized without erasing the entire disc. I should be able to unfinalize it. I'm going to hit the finalize button and it says finalize and I press in on the jog and it says are you sure and I say uh, yeah. If I don't I just click it again. I think I click either click it or click that. Which one do I click if I don't want to but if it Escape, maybe? Okay, so I haven't finalized it now. I see I can back out by hitting escape. If I hit play, my music is there. This is where if I want to um, put text in, for example. So if I want to add text, I can hit menu, and I can go down to text, and I click OK, text edit. Yes. Disc, disc or, and then you know the, the disc itself or I can give the tracks so I want to call the disc is I'll just call it uh, test oh how do I get uppercase it's gotta be a way to get uppercase on this so plug a PS2 keyboard in and have remote control the display key okay so we'll go back here we'll go down to menu text um, menu text text edit yes disc display okay caps you see, there we go. Music Bakery. Music M. And then I would hit, uh, I think, menu to get out of that and save it. Is it escape or menu? I think it's, yeah, menu. That saved that. Now, if I want to add, say, a, a, a song title, I could go back into um, menu, text, text edit. I want to enter track 
four because I know that one's called Starwalk. So I'll go down to this one and I'll enter Starwalk. Like that, and then I hit menu, and now that track is named. And that's the only two I'm going to name for this. I'm not going to finalize the disc because if I don't finalize it, then it won't save it. It's going to save it to the table of contents. So if I hit finalize, yes, I'm sure. It's going to take one minute and 40 seconds to finalize, and then uh, we're going to try this in another, like a cheap, cheap boom box that I was sent to evaluate. And I did, and I put it back in its box, and we're going to see if it'll play a CDRW. Okay, the disc is now finalized. If I play the track, this of course track has no text. Either there's this one, R3, but 4 has the track title that I popped in. I'm going to eject this disc, and I'm going to see if it plays on this. This is a Riquetis. CD player. It will play MP3 CDs apparently. It should play this old disc no problem. This is this is a brand new CD player, right? It's uh, you know everyone thinks they don't make CD players anymore. Well, I just was sent this one not that long ago to evaluate. Got FM radio. And uh, how do I get this thing to go to? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, maybe help if I push the source button. So this is going to play that that MP3 disc. It should anyway. Yeah. Twelve folders, 123 tracks, which it does, no problem. But the question is, will it read? CBRW. We know it reads CBR. Will it read the CBRW disc that I just created and finalized? It should. Yes, it does. Not bad, it doesn't skip. Oops, what did I push there? So that works. Excellent. A little boombox. Who would have thought of boombox in 2023 to play CDs, but they're out there still. And I still like the CD format, which is evident because I bought a CD recorder last week just before I got struck down by that bloody COVID which has kept me off work and isolated at the house for the past five days I'm going stir crazy I can't wait to get back to work it's just that I have to follow the protocol which says I have to test negative which hopefully I will because I'm chomping at the bit to get the hell out of here because it's driving me crazy. If you press the record button when there's no disc in it, it goes into monitor mode. That way you can monitor what's going through the unit and of course set your levels and so forth up. So you can make your recording without actually having to put a disc in. I want to try to unfinalize the disc and see if I can edit it. So we'll pop the disc back in. It says disk loading, table of contents reading. I should be able to hit the erase button and scroll to unfinalize. Or no, maybe it's the finalize button I have to hit first. I hit finalize, can't edit, no text, no, of course not. Erase, erase disk, erase track, refresh, that'll wipe the whole disk. Unfinalize, there we go. So those are the options. So I hit unfinalize. Am I sure? Yes. It'll take one minute and 17 seconds. I'm curious, is it, is it going to erase the, the titles or is it going to keep the um, the titles? It, sh it should read the table of contents and keep the text information. You have the manual here, which is kind of nice. You can erase groups of tracks 
it says you select you can erase a single track or you can erase X number of tracks like if you want to erase track 5 to 7 you could erase track just tracks 5 to 7 let's try erasing one of the tracks so let's um, let's try erasing we'll try erasing track 3 so from the stop mode I'm gonna hit erase erase disk erase track there we go erase track 4 out of 4 erase track 3 and 4 okay okay that's what it gives me so if I say erase track 3 okay so it's gonna let me just erase track 3 and 4 that's how it works so if I if I bail out of that I just hit the I think it's the escape key there so so you can erase to the end of the disk so if you make a mistake you can erase that one last track or if you want to erase the last two tracks etc but you can't uh, just erase one in the middle it has to be from there to the end that way you free up the space I want to go back and I want to edit so I want to put the track names in for these other tracks it's this BS that drives me crazy this track is called Tasty Jazz if you go to musicbakery.com and look up Tasty Jazz you will hear this song but it, Shazam identifies it as this bullshit Francia Jazz Line Orchestra that like years ago made a claim that they owned the rights to the music when in fact they do not own the rights to the music they stole the music and they changed the name if I go to Music Bakery and look it up there indeed is the track and if I play it there it is that's from the Music Bakery their own YouTube channel now on uh, this is what they've done now to try to stop all these bullshit copyright claims as they went and put their music up on their own channel you go to the music bakeries uh, I'm gonna subscribe why not I'm a I'm a customer of theirs from years gone by anyway um, yeah they put their music up a few years ago to stop all the BS copyright claims that these fraudsters continue to, to make it's made my life a lot easier because it's harder for them now to try to make a claim against something that is already there in the database that prevents it and this is royalty free music anyway that, again Shazam still Shazam still identified it as uh, as the wrong track because Shazam's got their head up their rear end anyway um, I'm gonna label this one See if I go back here. No, it's not. But, but, get this. If I click here, it's the same song. These guys stole it and they're still stealing it. Anyway, uh, let's go back and we'll label this thing. Uh, we'll call it uh, Tasty Jazz. Text. Text edit. Track one. Tasty Jazz. This is almost as fun as a mini disc player. Actually, it's a whole lot more fun because, uh, well, it makes discs that will play on uh, anything. Not just those little finicky disc players. There, you see? And then I hit uh, menu, and that's done. And I can do the same for the next track and the third track, and then finalize the game. We're going to pull this thing apart. I'll show you guys what's in it. So once I've labeled all my tracks Tasty Jazz, Skank It, Super Smooth, and Starwalk. Once I've done that, I can hit the finalize button again, and now it will finalize the table of contents and write the CD data into it for the tracks. And now this disc, if it's played on a, a CD player that supports text, it will display the name of the track. That's the whole point in putting the track information in. A little easier on this than some of the other systems that I've dealt with. Um, with a computer it's not too bad you can type it in to certain softwares but not all of them do it but uh, this makes it pretty simple like in this machine and 
for what I paid for it, I'm even liking it even more because I know what some people have paid for these machines and they've, they've paid hundreds of dollars for them. This one here is actually a pretty good deal and it's in good shape. And I don't think it's had that much use. It came from another production uh, facility that uh, the guy's retiring, so I was bought some of his equipment from him. So um, it was used in in production work. So now that it's complete. Everything just plays as it's supposed to. Gotta like it. Okay, eject. I like the slot load on this as well. No trays to get hit on anything, just the disc just pops out. We're going to uh, let's throw this disc on top here just for now. I'm gonna pop this thing apart and we'll see what's inside it point out on the back in addition to the analog RCA plugs there's also coaxial digital and optical made in China of course I wonder how old this unit is I know this one's out of production now there's a new one that's replaced it they still make these units and they probably will make them for a while because well, this is basically replaced digital tape, right? There it is. Good size power supply on this thing. Look at the size of the power supply. Holy crap. Good heat sink on here. This is the obviously the digital board. And then it's just a small little drive over here. Just a standard. Is it a IDE drive? I think it's just an IDE drive. Looks like a laptop drive is what it looks like. 2013. So not that old. Right? This is, uh, you know, 10 years. But still, that's relatively recent vintage. So it should be good for a long time, I would hope. Yeah, this is like a, a slot load uh, drive for a computer. Very thin. And uh, I would not anticipate that I'm going to have too many problems with it, but I'm sure the drive is probably available as just a replacement drive. It looks like an IDE type, type connector on here. Probably any computer drive would work. Maybe not. It might have custom firmware, but um, anyway, there's not much to it. It's just a very basic uh, CD burner, but no special disc required. The uh, the problem with the, as I say, was what I was mentioning the other drives, or the other uh, uh, standalone machines, is that what guys ended up doing was they ended up putting in the audio disc, and then once it read the disc, they'd open the drive up, lift the cover off it, pop the disc out, pop the other disc in put the cover back on it and then record it and I've seen I've seen guys do it there's I'm sure if you look on the internet there'll be a guy showing how to do it but I've seen I've seen it done where uh, there's a guy that's got one that I know uh, that's got one I forget what it is that he's got I think it might be a Sony but uh, it sits on the top of his stereo rack and he just leaves the cover on the thing and then when he goes to use it he pops in one of those music discs lifts the cover off it as soon as it reads the, the table of contents pops open the clamp pulls out the disc pops the disc he's taking the cover off it so just the clamps available and he can pull the clamp up slide the disc out put another disc in and then set the cover back on top of it and goes ahead and makes his recording that's how much he hates the audio discs I said to him it's too much work but um, I guess you do what you got to do to circumvent the uh, the technology of the day, or you could just go out and buy a proper machine that doesn't require the special discs like this one. What's holding this up? Oh, you know what? I think I got to probably take the screw out of the side here. It's got screws in the side of it for um, rack mount. I think this one is hanging up on the uh, power switch. 
there we go. Anyway, that's about all on this one. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.